Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about the upcoming extreme pattern that we're going to be in. That includes an Arctic blast, as well as a big warm-up for the west coast of the United States. Now, anyway, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, how do you think this upcoming summer is going to go? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. The reason I asked that one is because the summer is rapidly approaching, actually. You know, we're already in the beginning of May, and before you know it, it'll be June, and that's meteorological summer, June 1st. So uh, we're already very, very close to when summer-like conditions will be around. All right, now let's get straight into things. I want to show you guys what, why I call this an Arctic blast, because a lot of people were like, it's not cold enough to be an Arctic blast. This is a term that typically just means whatever you think it means, whatever you perceive it as, because it's not really a scientific term. Uh, but I think the best description of what an Arctic blast is, is an air mass that comes from the Arctic regions of the world. Uh, and here's a picture of where this Arctic blast was at on April 27th, after it had moved out of the Arctic Circle. You can see it's up there in northern Canada, right next door to Alaska. And then by the time we reached May 5th, this reached all the way down into the United States. So for me, I don't really even care how cold it got. Uh, I'm more just looking at, did it come from the Arctic? Because if it got super cold and it didn't come from the Arctic, how could you call it an Arctic blast? It's not even from the Arctic regions. Uh, so it's more about where it came from and where it comes uh, rather than how cold it gets. I hope that makes sense. That is definitely, uh, my perception of what the definition of an Arctic blast is. And I think it's the most accurate depiction as well. Uh, but again, it's all just, it's just whatever you make it because it's not really a scientific term at all. Now let's just take a look at the day one temperature anomaly. This is going to be through the day today. As you can see, the Eastern seaboard will be dealing with some warmer than normal conditions. Same story with the West coast. We talked about this in yesterday's video. Uh, and that is going to be that positive PNA developing out there in the western United States, a Pacific North American Oscillation. So basically what this is, is if it's very warm in the western United States, and also Canada, basically warm in the western North America regions, uh, we will typically see cold to the east of that region. Uh, so that's why we see this major Arctic blast pushing from the northern regions of Canada all the way down into the central regions of the United States because we have that ridge in the western regions of North America uh, and that's just allowing for that cold, cold air to push in further east than that. You can see we still have some warm air around for the eastern regions of the United States but that's not even going to last too long. What we will be watching for is as this positive PNA continues to develop we watch for that cold air to push further and further east and actually become more potent as time moves on. So that warm up for the eastern seaboard is only going to last a little bit and then that cool down will be rapidly coming into the area. So what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at when that's going to occur. When that cool down is going to push even further east and we're just going to take it day by day and also try to figure out if we can see when this cool down will be coming to a little bit of an end. Now by the time we're reaching Thursday, May 6th, tomorrow from the time I'm making this video, you can tell that that positive PNA has become even more uh, just established there for the western third of the country there. And that cooldown has pushed even further east. We see plenty of those greens going on for the upper Midwest as well as the Ohio Valley. And that's going to be where we're 10 to 15 degrees below normal, which is quite potent. Uh, we also see for the southeast there, look at that. We have a little bit of warm hanging on, but that is not going to last long either. Trust me, as this cooldown is rapidly rapidly moving into the area. You might have also noticed that that positive PNA has come a little bit further eastward. That means that cooldown that is to the east of the positive PNA is also going to move a little bit further eastward uh, just with that. They kind of correlate just like that. Um, and, and the minor things like that that you noticed are going to have a very large effect on where these air masses move to. So it's, it's a very interesting way it works. And once you fully understand it, it's so fun uh, to just watch these patterns take place. And I, I love my job. I love my job. So let's take a look at what this weekend has in store. Let's start out with Friday. That's going to be May 7th. As you can see, that warm-up for the West is moving even further east, now centered almost over the four corner states. Uh, that cool-down in the east is actually a little bit more potent. Look at those greens showing up, getting a little bit brighter there uh, for the upper Midwest, the Ohio Valley, even in interior eastern regions of the United States, as well as the Great Lakes. So we have that very potent cool-down just establishing itself and hanging around. This is going to mean some dreary temperatures, 50s and 60s for most regions in the highs, uh, and even below freezing for a lot of regions. 
uh, as the lows. So there's obviously major, major implications there. You're going to want to watch for frost advisories, uh, freeze warnings, things of that nature, obviously for your plants if you're into that type of stuff. Uh, you're definitely going to be wanting to pay attention, especially the further north you are. Uh, that's going to be obviously huge. Now, look at the West Coast. We have a little bit of blue showing up for the West Coast. Does this spell an end for our positive PNA? Could this mean warm temperatures could be back on the way for the eastern United States? Obviously, only time will tell, so we're going to have to watch that very, very closely, as that could mean that we're coming to an end for that positive PNA. Uh, very huge implications there. Now, what we're going to do is move on towards Saturday, May 8th. So let's take a look at that. And as you can see, the northwestern United States fully it cools down up in those regions. And this could mean that we're coming to an end on that positive PNA, uh, which obviously a lot of people are probably hoping for. Let's take a look at those greens out east, though. And those are getting even more potent, widespread bright greens there for the Ohio Valley especially, but also the interior eastern United States. And then the Great Lakes as well, even up in through the upper Midwest. So many, many regions dealing with this very potent cold air still by Saturday, May 8th. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the actual temperatures for one frame there. And then we're going to continue on with that temperature pattern all the way until this might be coming to an end. Now, here's the actual low temperatures there. Uh, this is going to be the morning of Sunday, May 9th. And I want you to see this because look at all the 30s and 20s we have. We have especially 20s up there for Wisconsin, Minnesota, Michigan. Uh, but we also have 30s widespread throughout West Virginia, Ohio, Indiana, uh, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, all of New England, uh, and if not lower, 40s for most of those regions. So this is obviously huge implications for uh, your plants. Anytime you cross into even the upper 30s, I get a little bit nervous, obviously, for my plants down here. Here in Virginia, we don't really have to worry. Uh, it's mostly for you folks that are a little bit further north, uh, where I would definitely be a little bit concerned. So that's why I thought this was so important to share here, the actual temperatures there. Uh, and some of those nights might get even lower than this uh, or similar. So we're going to be watching for that. I would be just paying attention every single day until we get back into a warm pattern. Obviously, uh, just huge implications there if you are a gardener. Now, let's just take a look at those temperature anomalies again. This is going to be for May 9th. That's going to be Sunday. So throughout the day... Look at all those greens, uh, still just for the Mid-Atlantic, the Ohio Valley, up through the Plains, the Upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, uh, everywhere basically. But look at the Northwest, still colder than normal. The p and I, I just don't know what it wants to do at this point. Let's take a look at May 10th now, that's going to be Monday, and look at those bright greens. They're moving further south, Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi. Uh, it's really pushing south by this point. That positive p and is maybe making a comeback. Although I'd be watching for this to be a day that could this this positive PNA could potentially just come to an end um, if the models are wrong, since it's going to be at such a weak place, it might not make a comeback. So we're going to be watching closely. Uh, I'd be interested to see what happens with that. Let's just take this towards Tuesday, May 11th, and as you can see, that positive PNA here on our European model fully makes a comeback here for California, Oregon, Washington, Nevada. All of those regions there in the West are looking at warmer than normal conditions once again. So that cool down is looking super potent by this point. Bright greens basically for the Deep South, the Plains, the Ohio Valley, even the Northeast as well. Uh, very, very interesting. Now by Wednesday, and this will be May 12th, you can see that positive PNA is just still in place. That cool down in the Eastern United States is a little less potent by this point. We can only hope that obviously that does occur that way. Uh, but those darker greens are indicating a little bit less colder than normal. Uh, and then by the time we're taking a look at Thursday, May 13th, you can see it gets a little bit less potent once again. And then by the time we take a look at Friday, May 14th, uh, it's getting even weaker, but still around according to this model. Obviously, this is 240 hours out, so we can hope that this is maybe just inaccurate. Obviously, towards the end, that confidence is going to be a little bit lower. Anyway, for today's confidence tab, we are at a 5 out of 6. I'm fairly confident that this is going to be around basically through the first half of May. Uh, colder air in the east is going to be basically the definitive pattern uh, for this first half of the month, unfortunately. So yes, I am quite confident in that. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, um, when do you think we will start to warm up this month? And James Marr said, I believe in the second half of the month, it will begin to warm up. It might be hopeful thinking, but I think I agree for the most part as well. Anyway, for today's patron 
highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum Patrons, Property Damage, Jonathan Bennett, James Wade, Dovi Nagel, Alan Belemo, Adam S., Larry the Pan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Ada Mattis. Alongside our Diamond Patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Chair, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Michael Buell, Cat Bite, Charles Stinnett, Kelly Manhart, It's Jay, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Legos, Garys, and John Qualisi. If you would like to be a part of this patron entry in the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, Weather Top Dog Hair Farms 1, and then our super fan, Phoenix Nimitz. If you would like to join our exciting channel membership, you can do so by clicking that button next to the subscribe button down below. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to absolutely destroy the like button, leave a bunch of comments down below, and be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.